Hi, I'm Danielle from Put a Finish On It, and I recently finished reading Dream When You're Feeling Blue by Elizabeth Berg. Published in 2007, it's a World War II era story set in Chicago. The novel begins in April 1943 and tells the story of a large Irish Catholic family wherein the eldest three children are sisters who are 17, 20, and 22. The story really does focus on sisterhood and family, in addition to beautifully revealing life in wartime Chicago. I know about ration cards and victory gardens, and I've seen a really great documentary on the Rosie the Riveter women who worked in factories. And I've heard of President Roosevelt's fireside chats and Eleanor Roosevelt's column in the Ladies Home Journal. I don't think I've read another novel that brings to life so thoroughly that time in our history and emphasizes how much the war consumed every part of daily life. The eldest sister, Kitty, quits her desk job to work in a warplane factory, and the work is terrible and she wants to quit, but she also knows that she's literally contributing to the war effort, and she's making a lot more money, which gives her a feeling of capability and independence that she's never had. All three sisters are in love with men in the service, and every night they gather around their kitchen table and write letters to the men they love and to men they danced within the service centers because it's their duty to make the men happy when they can. And we get to read some of the letters that the sisters receive from all of these men. I teared up on several occasions at particularly poignant scenes. The parents are wonderful characters too, and the family dynamic is fun and believable. So I'm reading along, really enjoying the story, getting attached to the characters, and the letters the sister receives start becoming more serious and existential. And suddenly I realize that in a World War II story about three sisters and the men they love, they can't all be coming home. And then it turns into one of those novels where the last 30 pages speed everything up. Time starts jumping forward and I find out who doesn't make it home. And then I turn the page and it's a year later. And then I turn the page again and it's six years later. And Miss Berg is ripping my heart out just a little. The story felt rushed and sad and not fair in the end. And sad stories usually make me mad. Like, gah, why did I read that? But I immediately read the interview with the author at the end of the book and it made me feel a little better. I really enjoyed the setting, the time period, the family dynamic, and the characters' imperfections. The book makes me want to seek out more stories of women in the 40s and takes me back to the women's history class I took in college. I highly recommend this book. Just don't read the last 15 pages.